Hallelujah. God is good all the time. and all the time. The first song we sang was written by Reverend David. The Hallelujah, I sing praise. Hallelujah. Yeah. Did you want to lift up your hands as we give God praise this morning? He's worthy of all praise and adoration. Give him praise. Give him all the glory. He's worthy. This is the great I am. Give him praise. Give him glory. Bless the name of the Lord. Just lift your voice with the fruits of your lips and magnify the name of the Lord with me. We give you glory, Jesus. You are worthy, Lord Jesus. We give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. Hallelujah. We bless you. Bless you. You are the great.
morning to you all. On behalf of our Archbishop Charles and Reverend Mrs. Vivian Ajinasari, we warmly welcome you to our first service. We are coming to you live from Perez Dome, Jolly Junction. First Chronicles 4. You can take your seat, please. 9 and 10 talks about Jabez. He was named Jabez because the mother bore him in pain. Pain signifies sorrow, misery, trouble. But when Jabez looked to God, God turned his story around. The Bible says that God answered his request. He actually prayed that God would bless him indeed. God will enlarge his territory. The hand of God should be on him and that God would deliver him from evil. If God did it for Jabez, then God will do it for you. For whatever you have been believing God for, God will come through for you. Whatever you are believing God for, that you want to go forward, God will enlarge your territories. You have more influence. God will do strange miracles in your life. In Jesus' name. It's time for... Uh, offering oh sorry time for off, um, testimonies and we have Reverend Kwa here let's give my hand put your hands together for the Lord someone hallelujah oh your club can be better this morning Hallelujah. This morning we have a few testimonies to share. Our first one is coming from our dear sister, Sister uh, Lanyo Happy. And she says, I want to thank God for his goodness and his wonderful works for me and my family. I have been involved in evangelism every day. And God has preserved and continually protected my life. And God has been using a precious sister in the family to support me in doing the work of God. The Archbishop said the last time that 
the Lord will begin to do strange things in our lives. And I've seen God do this in my life. Hallelujah. Last Friday, I went to a funeral with my brothers and I wanted to return back from the funeral, but I had no money. But miraculously, God used a member of the family to support in bringing me back home. I want to be gracious to God and I want to thank God for all that he has done for me and he keep doing in my life in Jesus' precious name. Amen. You can put your hands together. She came with a thanksgiving offering. And our second testimony reads like this. Psalm, 90, Psalm 9 verses 1. I will praise the Lord with all my heart and tell of his wonderful things and the wonderful things you have done. We want to testify to the glory of God. And this is coming from Mr. and Mrs. Joseph Dixon. Dixon sorry. On the night of 27 June, this year, my husband started complaining of a severe headache. I gave him a painkiller which did not change anything. He then started screaming as the pain increased and started vomiting as well. I rushed him to a hospital in the community and he was admitted at the emergency. Due to the severe headache, he was injected with a lot of painkillers, but the pain could not stop. A head scan was done the next day and it was detected that he had a brain hemorrhage, which means he had an emergency condition which a blood vessel had burst, causing bleeding in the brain. He could neither eat nor drink. A drug was recommended which I checked with a lot of pharmacies but could not get it. I continued praying for God to have mercy on him. After about eight hours of search for the drug, we finally got it and God sustained him through the period of search for the drug. When he took the drug, he vomited it out. Looking at the situation, he was getting worse. So I requested for a transfer to another hospital only to be told there were no beds. We kept praying and trusting God to intervene. Finally, on Wednesday, he got the transfer to the intensive care unit of the bank of the bank hospital. He was immediately taken to the theater for a neurologist to check for the best vessel in the brain. To the glory of God, after some hours in the theater, he was brought to the ward with the report that they could not find any best blood vessel. We began to pray and told God that he alone is the impossibility specialist so he could perform a miracle for him. I called Reverend Coleman and Dr. Selassie who all prayed with him in the ICU. He was in the ICU for almost two weeks. He could neither open his eyes nor talk but through it all, God did not leave us. Anytime he wakes up, he becomes very aggressive. It takes two to three male nurses to control and sedate him to sleep. One Sunday morning while Archbishop was preaching, he raised the song, I am standing on the promise of God. I keyed into that song that yes, I am also standing on the promise of God that he would not leave me nor forsake me and I kept praying after the service I went with Reverend Kuma to see the Archbishop and he prayed his usual short but powerful packed prayer he checked on him we checked on him after the church service and to the glory of God he was taken to the ward from the intensive care unit you can put your hands together for the Lord he was awake and could recognize us all. We thank God he is back home now, feeling better. And now at church, 
this morning and doing what he always usually does. We thank God that what is usually associated with his sickness, he did not experience any of it. We thank the Archbishop for his prayers. We also thank the Auxiliary Bishop, Dr. Selassie, Reverend Coleman, Reverend Kennedy, the Protocol Department, and all friends for all your prayers and support. God bless you, and may he continue to hear our prayers when we pray. Put your hands together. And they came with a thanksgiving offering. And I believe as the Lord has done this for them, your testimony, your miracle, your breakthrough is on its way. You can put your hands together and let's celebrate the goodness of the Lord. Oh, you can do it better to the Lord. If God did it for him, he will do it for you. If you just joined us online, we are glad to have you join, have you with us, with us in our service. We are live on digital media platforms, Facebook and YouTube with the name at the Price Doom. You can watch us on Precious TV and KFM TV. Listen to us on Rainbow Radio 87.5 megahertz and on podcast at Archbishop Charles Aginasare. Do share with your family and friends who have not yet joined us and your life will never be the same. If you, you are here, I believe you came with a prepared offering. Kindly lift it up. For those of us online, please lift up your offerings as well. And the short code for those online is star 800 1000 hash across all mobile platforms with no transaction fee or e-levy star 800 1000 hash across all mobile networks with no e-levy or transaction fee um, for those who, are, who want to pay through the MTN Momo is 0243500624 again 0243500624 Voda Cash is 0203 1620.84 I repeat 0203162084. Let's share a prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the seeds you've given us. We believe you for a thousandfold return. In Jesus' name, we call it done. Amen. Now, if you are abroad, you can also pay via send wave or well remit. The number is plus 233-203-162084. The number is plus 233-203. 203-16-2084 or PayPal to pay with PayPal kindly use the email address perezdom at perezchapel.org PayPal is perezdom at perezchapel.org or use the username at perezdom God richly bless you let's welcome the choir as a minister to us. Unyanku ponye yi waye Ya bom kase Unye razi Unansa sinina Kutuo Odo manko Mai Unyanku ponye yi waye Unyanku ponye yi waye Ya bom kase Somebody, please, you want to clap your hands and shout out to him. Hallelujah. Oh, first of 
Jesus, I can feel you. Somebody shout out to him. It is coming, it is coming. Somebody scream out to him. If the Lord has been good to you, you want to stand on your feet and shout out to the Lord. If the Lord has been good to you, you want to stand on your feet and shout out to him. Our glory belongs to our God. He alone deserves it. Hallelujah. You want to take your seats. Amen. I don't know about you, but me, I brought my praise dance this morning. You can feel free and stand and dance with us.
Jesus a mighty clap offering. You want to give Jesus a mighty clap offering. You want to do it better. You want to do it better. Ah, you are alive and you are here this morning and you want to give Jesus a mighty clap offering. That clap can be better. That clap can be better. You can give him a better clap offering. The Bible says in Psalm 121 verse 4 to 8, Behold, he who keeps Israel shall neither sleep nor slumber. Shall neither slumber nor sleep. Ah, the God that has been watching you. He has neither slept nor slumbered. And you want to appreciate him this morning. You want to appreciate him this morning. And the psalmist continues to say, he's your keeper. He's the shade of your right hand. The sun shall not smite you by day nor the moon by night. You are here because God put a shade over your head. You are here because the sun did not smite you in the day. You are, you are here because we did not hear a bad news in the day. You are here because the moon did not smite you by night. Whilst you slept, there was a shade over your head. Uh, and you want to appreciate God this morning. He will preserve you from every evil. He will preserve your 
so. If God could open your eyes to see the evil that went on from Sunday to Saturday morning. Ah, you will not be here this morning. But he preserved you. And the psalmist ends by saying he preserves your going out and your coming in. You are here because as you went out, somebody was looking out for you. As you were coming in, somebody was looking out for you. You want to give Jesus praise. You want to give him praise. Ah, he neither sleeps nor slumbers. We slept, we slumbered. Some of you say you don't, you, it's difficult for you to sleep at night, but at least you get some 30 minutes or 45 minutes or one hour. There is somebody, he doesn't even, his eyes do not even close for a second and his head goes like that. No, he never slumbers. He never sleeps. Because if he is to slumber, you will be finished. If he is to slumber, you will be consumed. If he is to slumber, you will be destroyed. But the God of Israel... The God of Bishop Charles Ajinasare. He never slumbers. He never sleeps. And that is why you are here this morning. And you want to appreciate him. You want to appreciate him. Please help me appreciate our father, the Archbishop, and our mother, Reverend Mrs. Ajinasare, who is here with us, who is here with us. Our father, the Archbishop, is in Lebanon. Conquering demons and devils. Amen. We want to appreciate him. You want to appreciate him. Please help me appreciate all the senior ministers in the house, the reverend ministers, the pastors, the elders, deacons, and deaconesses, the church board that sees to the day to day running of this church. You want to appreciate them this morning. And you want to pick your Bible. And you want to say, This is my Bible. You want to say, This is my Bible. It is the word of God. It has the power to change my life. It has the power to transform my life. By this word, I will become everything written in it. By the word, every promise of God for my life will be fulfilled. I am not a hearer of the word. I'm a doer of the word. You want to wave your Bible this morning? And we want to share a word of prayer. Father, we thank you this morning. We give you praise and glory. Father, we thank you that we are here once again to begin another week. Lord, what a way to begin the new week in your presence. Father, nobody comes into Zion and lives the same. Your word says that they go from strength to strength as many as come unto Zion. Father, this morning as we have come, may we live at a greater level of strength. Father, we thank you that the sun did not smite us in the day. Father, we thank you that the moon did not smite us in the night. Father, we thank you that you are a keeper and you are a shade. Father, as we have begun a new week, Father, may this week be a different and a better week for us. May it be a week of our Rehoboth. Father, may this week be filled with many testimonies. Father, those who went to the hospital this week, may they come out. Father, those who are down this week, may they be lifted up. Father, those whose businesses have collapsed, Father, this week, may there be a turnaround. Father, those who have been said it is finished, may this week be a new beginning for them. We give you praise. We give you glory. Touch my lips of clay. Grant me utterance this morning. Father, and at the end of the day, we will give you praise and all the glory and all the honor. In Jesus' name we have prayed and we will say a big amen. Your amen can be louder this morning. Please, you may sit down. Please, you may sit down. This is our month of the man of God or the month of the law of impact. And in the dome, we have close to 40 part-time and full-time pastors combined. Majority of them are part-time pastors anyway. And it is good to understand the work of the man of God. And I'm preaching from a bishop has a book that is yet to come out, The Law of Impact, The Man of God, and The Work of the Man of God. 
the work of the man of God. Bible says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 12 to 13 Paul says that and we urge you brethren to recognize those who labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you and to esteem them highly in love for their work's sake be at peace amongst yourself i want to read the message bible that simplifies this scripture it says and now friends we ask you to honor those leaders who work so hard for you who have been given the responsibility of urging and guiding you along in your obedience overwhelm them with appreciation and love get along amongst yourself each of you doing your part Paul says and now friends we ask you to honor those leaders who work so hard for you they are leaders who work so hard and when you see the size of this church you can tell that the set man of God the prophet upon this ministry has worked hard you can tell that the men of God in this ministry are working hard. Paul says that we should honor those leaders who work so hard for you. Who have been given the responsibility of urging, of encouraging and guiding you along in your obedience. Paul is saying that when you see a man of God guiding you in your obedience and urging you, honor him. Sometimes you are, you, you are driving to a place and you are lost and you, you think that somebody, you ask the person, I'm going here. Can you please help me? The person says, yes, I know where you're going. Let me direct you. And by the end of the day, you realize that you are even more lost than the person who thought they knew the way. Paul says that those who guide you in your way, honor them. You are here this morning because we have a guide who has never been lost. Those who guide you in your way. Sometimes you, many of us have what we call Google, the Google Maps. And sometimes you put a location. The person is standing there and I sent you a location. And when you, get, when you are close to the area, the Google Map takes you to a place that is very, very far from where you are going. And you are wondering, this Google Map, which is a satellite in the air, has even missed the road. But we have a guide who has never missed the road we have a guide if you are clapping you want to do it better we have a guide who knows where he's going who has a vision so who took this church from tamale to circle brought the church to the old auditorium moved it into this magnificent dome we have a guide who knows where he's going you want to honor him you can do that and honor him with a clap it's a month of the man of god so if you if you feel if you want if you feel like you want to honor with a clap please feel free because the men of god deserve the honor and Paul says, overwhelm them with appreciation and love. Overwhelm them. Overwhelm them. Because they did not cause you to lose your way. There are many people who have lost their way because of the man of God over their lives. There are many people who, who the man of God has put their hand on. They were, doing, they were doing well. The man of God put their hand on them. And since that day, everything has become scatter scatter in their lives. There are certain people that the man of God entered their life and that was the beginning of the downhill. But we thank God for our father and our mother, the Archbishop and Mama Vivi. And we appreciate and we honor them. All the pastors, the senior ministers who have been in this ministry, who have been loyal to the Archbishop, we honor you and we appreciate you and we love you. Yeah. But Paul was writing to the church in Thessalonica to recognize and esteem those whom God has set over them because of their labor. But many in our world and in our nation do the opposite. Rather than honor the man of God for what he does, they trivialize what the man of God does. So Paul says that honor those who labor among you. Paul was calling the work of the man of God as labor. 
what men of God do is labor. And the Greek word for labor is kopayo. K-O-P-I-A-O, kopayo. It means to labor. That word that Paul puts there is the, in the Greek, it means kopayo. And that word means to labor until you are worn out. Sometimes you see our archbishop week upon week. Sometimes he can preach the whole week. When we have power encounters, you preach on Sunday, preach on Monday, throughout the week, and again come and preach on the Sunday, and it continues without fail. Kopayo, to work until you are worn out. Kopayo means to be depleted or exhausted. So Paul is saying that honor those who work and after they work they are depleted and they are exhausted kopayo means to toil or to work with effort of bodily and mental labor alike to toil or work with effort of bodily and mental labor alike so when you put this definition into what Paul was saying Paul says and we urge you brethren to recognize those who labor until they are worn out among you. We urge you, brethren, to recognize those who work or labor until they are depleted and they are exhausted. When they stand here, they give everything inside them, both spiritual, both physical, both mental and psychological. They are worn out and depleted. What Paul was saying was that we urge you, brethren, to recognize those who toil and work with effort of bodily and mental labor alike he says honor them honor them pastoral work or spiritual ministry one of the difficulties of the pastoral work is that because it is very spiritual it is very difficult to appraise and it is very difficult to assess because most of the work of a pastor is very spiritual so i just wanted to take you i just want to take you through some of the misconceptions about the pastoral ministry the first point is that the work of the ministry many people consider the work of the ministry as not actually work when many people come around the compound they may see a pastor either praying or reading in his in his office or sitting in his office praying and they feel that this pastor is lazy and is not doing any work but trust me there is a lot of work going on as the pastor is, is praying and reading many people think that it is not actually work because many people come and they don't see the pastor doing, probably lifting blocks or, or sweeping or cleaning. They feel that it is not work. When many people talk about work, they think that the only work is when the, the person is a banker or a doctor, a teacher, a lawyer or one of the professions. But when they look at a man of God, they think that men of God are lazy and are not working. But this morning I came to tell somebody, Paul says, honor them that work hard. Men of God work hard and want to appreciate them for that. We want to appreciate them for that. And you can see people's reaction to the man of God with how they react when their children decide that they want to enter into the work of the ministry. There are many people here this morning who, if your son came after finishing university and told you, I want to do ministry, I want to become a pastor, you would tell them, go and find something better to do. Because you don't consider the work of the man of God as, as any work at all. But the work of the man of God is existing. The work of the man of God is to urge and to guide you in your obedience of the Lord. The work of the man of God does not only end here, but when he also gets into heaven, when everybody is being given their place, the man of God will be asked to give an account of every soul that God gave him. What a work. Tell somebody what a work. Yeah. the second misconception about the man of God is that or the ministry the ministry work is that it is considered inferior to other jobs when people talk about the ministry or the man of God the work of the man of God is considered inferior when people look at the bank and how they deliver their services and how they help businessmen to, to come out of, of probably one 
financial situation or the other and when you look at probably a pilot and how he flies people from one end to the other and brings them to their destination and back they say that is work but when it comes to the man of God nobody sees that what he's doing is work meanwhile it is the man of God's job to make sure that every soul under his care ends up in the kingdom of God it is work it is work point number three misconception about the man of God many people think that the ministry work should be associated with poverty that when you are in ministry work poverty should be your portion meanwhile the man of God prays for people to be blessed the man of God prays for people's businesses to go on when people are sick the man of God prays that health and strength to come into their body so that they can get back and do their work and provide for their family and society but when people think about the ministry work they think that the man of God should be associated with poverty so there's a popular saying that as poor as a church mouse why when the church mouse hides in a corner and comes out and comes into the chapel there is nothing not even food for them not even food for the mouth so many people think that the man of God should be associated with poverty so many many candidates many candidates for ministry because they are afraid of poverty and being looked down on by society they don't even consider the work of ministry as an option as an option so you, you meet people and you ask them why are you not in full-time ministry you what you are doing you you qualify to be a man of god why haven't you considered ministry and they look at you and wonder you know what why do you want me to live a life of poverty I remember when I left the medical profession to come into ministry so many people looked at me and wondered why am I why would I leave an honorable profession and come into a work like ministry but the greatest work any man or woman can do is to serve the king of kings and the lord of laws when God calls you you cannot refuse <laughs> regardless of where you are and what you are doing many people are wondering why would you go to school for seven years and leave and drop it and say you want to be a man of God why the greatest work the greatest profession anyone can do is to so Paul says that you are the or Peter says you are the oracles of God it is a privilege and an honor the Bible says that he puts this excellence in earthen vessels. It is an honor to serve God. It's an honor to be a man of God. Let us appreciate our men and women of God who have taken this decision. So when we consider the man of God, many people think that he should wallow in poverty. The other misconception of the ministry work is that people think the ministry work is easy and that it is not demanding so many are of the view that people who are highly skilled and educated should rather work in the secular sector instead of wasting their skills and talents in the ministry many people think that if you are intelligent and you are skilled why would you waste your time being a man of god if you're a man of God then it means that you didn't have a future you didn't have a hope you were useless and so you looked and or you failed all your exams and after failing you looked and you thought hmm, let me just choose this profession where nobody does anything but that is a lie of the devil God has always had the skilled and the talented God has always had excellence and so the skilled and the talented become men and women of God the reason why people fail to see the importance of the work of ministry is that we use secular concepts and standards to appraise spiritual work. You look at how you are appraised at work and you use that to try to appraise a man of God. But the difference, there's a difference with the work of the man of God. Why? Most of the work of the man of God is spiritual. So let's look at the spiritual work of the man of God and what it entails. The spiritual work of the man of God and what it entails. First, the mystery of ministry work. So Paul says in 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1, this is a faithful saying. 
if a man desires the position of a bishop he desires a good work a good work so much of what the minister does is difficult to see with your eyes much much of what we do you you cannot see it with your eyes because it is mostly spiritual work and so and so there's a propensity to take the work for granted <laughs> so i may preach a sermon of 35 to 45 minutes to this morning and you may look at it and take it for granted but if i were to tell you the amount of preparation that went into it you would be surprised because you look at it with your physical eyes and you think oh for 35 or 45 minutes he has just he just woke up and just decided just decided to come and preach i read an article and it says whenever you hear a very good sermon of a man of god to preach it takes him at least 10 hours of preparation to come and stand here to preach i slept at 2 30 a.m this morning and woke up by 5 5 30 this morning to be here why throughout the night i was praying that god as your people come let them be blessed throughout the whole night i was soaking in the sermon throughout the whole night i was imbibing the sermon so that i can be a blessing unto you this morning yeah and you are not clapping for me you are clapping for the king of kings so you may see the 45 minutes of preaching and may not see the several hours the, the several days of fasting that back the sermon that is being preached you may not see the research that went into it you may not see the books that have been read for this message to, to come to you you may not see the meditation that was done on the scriptures to be able to break the scriptures down to come and feed you you may not even see the rewriting of the sermon so I'm reading from a tablet. What that meant was that I typed the message. And everybody who is going to, who is going to research knows that when I research, the, I have different drafts. I will have my first draft that will have probably 10 pages. And then I will cut it down to seven pages and eventually cut it down to probably five or four pages to come and minister to you. When you look at just the time the man of God comes to preach to you without looking at everything that took place to come you'll be making a mistake the man of God works and he works hard he works hard there's a time I gave somebody an opportunity to preach and then I gave him a, within another week, I gave him another opportunity to preach. He said, Pastor, after the first 45 minutes, the first time all my message in the world is finished. This second time, I don't have anything else to preach. So when a man of God stands here, especially our father, the archbishop, and our mama, and week in, week out, they are churning out new information. Know that they have worked. It didn't just come by, by, by coincidence. They have worked to be able to supply the knowledge and that message. Yeah. And we can appreciate them. Yeah. 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 It is work. It is work. So in the New Testament, the work of the man of God is in twofold. Prayer and the ministry of the word. So the Bible says in Acts chapter 6 verse 4, But we will give ourselves continually to prayer. And to the ministry of the word. We will give ourselves continually to prayer. There was a need in the church for, for, for there to be some welfare system to take care of the members. And Peter decided that we should get deacons and deaconesses to help. But as for us, we will do the work of ministry which is prayer and the word. Which is prayer and the word. So what is the nature of spiritual work? The nature of spiritual work. The law of spiritual work demands that we produce results or make impact. The law of spiritual work demands that we produce results or make impact. And this calls before we can assess the work of the man of God, we must understand the work of a minister. Because if you don't understand the work of a minister, you may not be able to appraise him and be able to reward him 
the way he's supposed to be rewarded. So most of us who work in the corporate settings, you know, at the end of a period, you are appraised. And based on how you perform in the appraisal, you are rewarded. Your appraisal is based on the objectives that were given you, the goals you set, and how you achieve those objectives. So if you don't understand the objectives and you don't understand the kind of work somebody is supposed to do, it is very difficult to appraise them. You may be appraising them, but you may be appraising them in a wrong manner. And if you don't appraise a person well, it is very difficult to give them the reward that they deserve. And if you don't understand, if we don't understand the work of the man of God, we will not appraise him the way he's supposed to be appraised, and we will not be able to reward him the way we, he's supposed to be rewarded. So many of us have not been able to even appraise our father, the archbishop, the way he's supposed to be appraised because we don't even understand what he does. Many of us have never even rewarded him, taking a gift and or taking a seed and saying, man of God, I came to bless you. Why? We have not even been able to appraise him to see the kind of hard work and labor he does to say that this is my reward to you. When I came, I was wearing chalote, but now God has blessed me. I have a whole room of shoes. Probably when I came, I, was, I came to the church walking, but after several years, God has blessed me with a car or God has blessed me with several cars. And I thank you for your spiritual guidance and prayer. And this is my reward word to you if we don't understand the work of the men or women of God we will not be able to appraise and to reward them so if you are a sports person and you watch sports when you see somebody like Cristiano Ronaldo or Messi or Mbappe or, or Ellen Haaland you see them jumping and running around they are working it is work it is work when you see your professor who taught you in the university running around, that professor is doing a hobby or he's only exercising. He may run more and invest more in running than probably Cristiano Ronaldo or any of the footballers would invest. But for him, it is still a sport. But for them, it is work and they are paid for that kind of work. They are paid for that kind of work. And I love football and I was just reading a recent article and they've gone to the extent of being able to relate how a team wins to how much the team runs on the field. So they'll tell you this team won because they ran two more kilometers than this other team. Or they ran one more kilometer than this other team. And that is the reason why they, they beat them. Why? As they are running, they are being paid for it and they are being rewarded. They are being rewarded. So you may be reading a book called Macbeth, which is a literature book. And you may meet a literature professor reading the same Macbeth. You are just reading it for fun. That, that professor, literature professor who's reading Macbeth, he's reading it because it is his work and he's going to be paid and rewarded for that work. How many of you are understanding me? Yeah. And so in the same way, you may, you may praise, you may pray a lot. And you come to the office and the pastor is praying. The difference that you are, you are praying to God. But for the pastor, Peter said that we'll give ourselves to the work of, to, to the word and to prayer. So to the pastor, that prayer is his work. You may come and the Bible may be opened on his table. And you may be, you may be reading your, your Bible in the house. But the difference that to the pastor, that is his work. We'll give ourselves to the word and to prayer. We give ourselves the word and to prayer. So in our house, even though I'm the doctor in the house, I'm not called doctor. Mama Vivi is called the doctor of the house. Because I may prescribe medications to any member of the family and it may take them probably five days before they see the result. When Mama Vivi prescribes the medication for you, she will ask some herbs to eat that will get you well in three days so she's called the doctor of the house amen but she may be able to prescribe better than me by adding homeopathic treatment and sometimes when she prescribes the herbs for you and you start drinking you wonder why must healing be so painful and so bitter 
but trust me, by the time you finish drinking that concoction, that fever or whatever was worrying you will run away back to hell. But if you are clapping, please, you want to do that. <laughs> Some of the concoctions she makes are scary. <laughs> mixing, mixing all manner of things. If she was a doctor by certificate, I'm sure they would have barred her from practicing by now. Some of them have never been done before. She's the first person to do them. Some of them, by, as she's mixing them, mixing all kinds of things. The fact that she's doing this and getting the members of the family and even people outside the house better than I, the one who has a certificate, she, it is not her work. It is my work. <laughs> it is my work. <laughs> and I'll, I'm appraised and I'm rewarded for it. How many of you understand what I'm talking about? Yeah. So three things about ministry work, and I may be able to touch on one today because of time. One, ministry work is labor in prayer. Labor in prayer. The minister's work entails the aspect of laboring in prayer. So the Bible says in Colossians chapter 4 verse 12, Paul says that Epaphras, who is one of you? Epaphras is just like any other person in the church, but there's a difference. He's a born servant of Christ. He's a man of God. Even though he's one of you, prays with you all the time, but he greets you and he always labors fervently for you in prayers. Why? It is his work as a man of God to labor fervently in prayers. That you may stand perfect and complete in all the will of God. So the first spiritual assignment of the man of God is to labor fervently in the work of prayer. So when you see a man of God praying, and that's why you may, you may go to the archbishop or he may stand here and pray and he's praying for healing and it's just a two second or five second prayer. Why he has labored in prayer, so when he stands here as he declares, heaven must hear. So Jesus told Peter, upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever you lose on earth is loose in heaven. I will give you the keys of the kingdom. He must labor fervently in prayer. Labor fervently in prayer. The man of God does two kinds of prayers. The first is the prayer of consecration. The prayer of consecration. So the man of God has to constantly yield himself to God. He must constantly yield himself to God. To be used as an instrument of his grace. To be used as an instrument of his grace. To be a blessing to his people. Constantly yield himself as an instrument of grace. To be used to be a blessing to the people. And this takes personal prayer. Personal prayer. Every day the man of God must rededicate himself to the Lord so that God will use him and make him a blessing. So when you go into the Bible, God considers prayer and fasting as work. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 11 verse 27, Paul says, In weariness and painfulness, in watchings often, and Paul talks about watching, he's talking about prayer. So the Bible says that I will stand upon my watch. Why? He's talking about prayer. It is in hunger and thirst, in fastings often, in cold and nakedness. Cold and nakedness. So prayer of consecration. When a man prays, he's talking to God. When a minister prays, he's doing his work. The second type of prayer the man of God does is the prayer of intercession. The prayer of intercession. So the minister has the duty to intercede. And that intercession is to stand in the gap in prayer for the people. So the man of God intercedes. So God said, I was looking for a man to stand in the gap 
that I will not destroy the people and I found out the purpose of the minister is to intercede and to stand in the gap. Whilst you are out there, we are interceding for you. Whilst you are out there, our prophet and our mama are interceding for you. Why? It is our work and it is our duty and it is our responsibility. If you are here, you will shout an amen for me. So what does he interceding? One, he, he prays for souls. He prays for souls. First Timothy chapter 1 verse 3 to 4. Bible says that, Therefore I exhort you first of all, that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of truth. When you see a man of God praying, part of his intercession is for the salvation of souls and he's working. The Bible says in Psalm 2 verse 8, Ask of me and I will give you the nations for your inheritance and the ends of the earth for your possession. So one of the works of the man of God is intercession and he's supposed to intercede for the salvation of souls. And the Bible says in Galatians chapter 4 verse 19, after those souls have been saved, it is also his work for them to be established. So Paul says, my little children, for whom I labor in birth again. So the first labor was to get them saved. But I labor in bed again for you to be established. I labor in bed again until Christ is formed in you. The New Living Translation says, Oh my dear children, as if I feel as if I am going through labor pains for you again. So the man of God goes through labor pains for women who have given birth before and given birth by themselves. What we call the vaginal delivery. When they give birth, they go into labor. Painful labor pains. Paul says that I went into labor to get you saved. I go into labor again until Christ is formed in you. But when you see a man of God praying, he's not just praying, they are, he's laboring. Hmm. He's laboring. And we need to appreciate them for that. We need to appreciate them for that. If there's any man of God in the church, please, if you're clapping, please. Who has been a blessing to you. This is the kind of work they do. He prays for the healing. Point number two, he prays for the healing of the flock. So the second intercessory prayer he does, he prays for the healing of the flock. Ezekiel 34 verse 1 to 4. And the word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Prophesy against the men of God of Israel. Prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God to the shepherds. Woe to the shepherds of Israel who feed themselves. Should not the shepherds feed the flock? You eat the fat and clothe yourself with the wool. You slaughter the fatlings, but you do not feed the flock. The weak you have not strengthened, nor have you healed those who were sick, nor bound up the broken. One of the intercessory prayers of the man of God is to pray for the healing of the sick. So Paul says, is any of you afflicted? Let him call the elders. Let him locate a man of God. And let them pray and anoint his head or her head with oil. And the prayer of faith will heal them. So part of our intercession is for the healing of the flock. So when you come to the office and you see a man of God praying, part of his work is praying for the healing of the flock. Exodus, in Exodus chapter, chapter 17, the children of Israel had come into the wilderness and the Amalekites, the people of Amalek began to attack Israel and Moses told Joshua Joshua take some men and go and fight me Aaron and her would go up to the mountain and I will hold my rod the reason why Moses did not go with them and Moses had to go up to the mountain and the mountain represents a place of prayer was that 
Amalek were natives of the land. And that's what we call gorilla warfare. In gorilla warfare, people use what is in their surroundings to take advantage of the people who are coming. So even almighty America, when they went into Afghanistan, because they don't live there, didn't understand the terrain. The people at certain points in time defeated the whole army, the whole American army that had all the weapons, all the, all the drones, all, all the sophisticated things. And so the people of Amalek, like, this is their land and they have an advantage. And there is no way that Israel is going to win this battle except there is a man of God who is praying and interceding for them. The Bible says that any time Moses got tired and put his hand down, what it meant was that he had stopped praying. Then on the battlefield, we see that Amalek is winning the battle. Because physically, there is no way they are going to win the battle over the natives of the land. It is not possible. But the man of God will lift up his hand. And spiritual backing out of nowhere will come and Israel will begin to win the battle. Why? The battles of this life are not fought here on earth. The battles of this life are fought in the throne room of God. So you go and come and you are succeeding. And it's not because you are witty or you are intelligent. Most of the time, the men of God are praying and interceding for you. And so as you are fighting physically impossible battles, God is bringing the victory your way. Yeah. Yeah. They pray for the healing of the flock. Let us appreciate and honor the men and women of God that he has given us. Yeah. I remember two weeks ago, I was, I was called. One of our members, a young lady, had gone to have surgery, cesarean section. She was pregnant. She's been believing God for the three years or four years after marriage. God finally had one miscarriage upon the other, had finally gotten pregnant and delivered. So when she got pregnant, she chose one of the best hospitals in the city. See, this one is a miracle. I must take care of it. I, the best doctors must handle this pregnancy. The day of the cesarean section, the doctors went in. As the doctor who is experienced, who is at the end of his career, very experienced, as in one of the best clinics, as he was sewing up the womb, passed the needle through the intestines of the lady. So two days after being discharged, she starts feeling pain in the tummy, comes to the hospital, they do every test they don't see every everything the doctors suspect sh- should be happening after surgery they are not seeing it they do all the all the scans nothing the doctor said this one we cannot handle it you need to go to Kolebu. so she ends up at Kolebu, and they go in as they go in go and open it again so she had she had had a, one surgery before for fibroids had another one for cesarean section They go and open up again to see why she's complaining of the tummy. They go in and the doctor who who did the surgery had cut through the intestine. So the toilet which was supposed to come out was leaking into the stomach. So the husband called me on a Sunday. This is what is happening. When the doctors went in, the lady was fine in the morning. She was doing well. When the doctors went in, this is what is happening. I need you to come. The husband is also a doctor. I need you to come. So after service, after I finished everything I had to do, I drove to Kolebu. When I got there, the, the doctors were coming to meet my, this, this friend who is also a doctor to come and break the news. So, that when we, so he said, Doc, you're also a doctor and a pastor, so come and sit by me. So I went and then in the ICU, so the lady was brought in the ICU. Then one doctor sat to my right hand side. Three doctors sat to my left hand side. Then three nurses sat opposite us. And I'm a doctor. If you are coming to break good news, you come alone. Why? You want to take all the fans. But when you are coming to break bad news, you bring a lot of doctors. So as you are sitting there, I know that this one, it is not going well. So the woman started, you know, we went in. The lady was okay. You spoke to her this morning. But when we went in and we saw the feces, we took five hundred. We took two liters. So if you take a 500 liter bottle of um, aqua, that's four of that in her, in her abdomen. And in my, it's in my profession, few, let me say again, and she said, let, let me say again, very, very few. 
of people survive. So I go online and I Google, as I'm sitting there and listening, I Google what we call fecal peritonitis. That's toilet in the, in the, in the womb, in the, in the ab- abdominal space. And I see Europe, 85% mortality. Mortality is how many people die. Out of 10 patients who have that condition, eight of them will die. Then I see an article from America. Some states say six out of the 10 will die. Some say five out of the 10 will die. Then I look at my, my friend and he's shaking his head. If Europe is telling you that eight out of 10 will die, then in Ghana, you can imagine how many people die. So the doctor who is my friend starts tearing. You can look in his eyes and tell that he's tearing up. Then the doctor says that we won't promise you anything. At at this time, the lady, her heart is being kept by medications. Her breathing, she's on a ventilator. Her kidney has begun to shut down. We don't like the urine that is being produced. So pray. You need a lot of prayer. Then he looks, the lady, the doctor looks at me because they introduced me and said I'm a bishop, whatever. Says, you need to pray. You need to pray. Now it is your turn. We need you to pray. (laughs) And now they don't remember that I'm a doctor. Now they are saying that we need you to pray. There are certain times that you need a man of God to pray. Ah. Probably I may end here. I, I, was, I wanted to finish, but I can't finish. Probably I may end here. So, <laughs> I, I understand what is happening. So I begin to call some of my friends who are pastors or men of God who pray. I called Reverend Elvis. I called some other pastors. I said, any intercessory group you know, activate it. So the following day, Monday, I was there around 10 when the young man called me. He says, I have just met, so the first one was one of the doctors in the ICU. This one is now the, the professor in charge of the whole ICU. The, I just met the professor and he says, what is happening? They have never seen it before. The lady who was dying on a November later is awake. <laughs> so we, I, keep, I keep monitoring the progress day in, day out. Then Saturday night, last week Saturday night, I'm about to prepare, I'm praying, I'm, I'm reading my, I'm going through my sermon, I'm preparing to come to church. The young man calls me. He says, yesterday, the lady started complaining of the tummy again. When they press the tummy, white pus is coming out, white liquid is coming out. What it means is that there's an infection or what we call an abscess in the abdomen. So they have to go and open a fourth time. <laughs> and I told the doctor, this, uh, tell your wife that the demons in her house, the witches and the wizards in her house, they are not very good people. Ah! So they went in Saturday. By the time they were coming out, this lady had crashed. She was dying. So the, the, the husband was calling me to pray again because they had just met the professor now of the ICU who was telling them that this one, we have told you in the beginning already that this one, they don't survive. To go in a second time, now that the medication she was on, they have, we have doubled it. As in the heart is not working at all. It's just medications that are keeping that. And we don't like the blood pressure. This blood pressure, people don't survive. The kidneys are not working. The person is not breathing. Prepare yourself. But whatever you did the first time, do it again. <laughs> so the husband calls me. I'm like, what kind of devil is this? I'm preparing to come and sleep. I know that that whole night I will not be able to sleep because of this news. Because how do you come and stand here and announce that 32-year-old person went to give birth and die? Baby is fine. Person has gone to die. So that, that night, I call the same people I call them. I say, wherever they are, activate some prayer. I call Reverend Elsa, I call some of the pastors. I, and I tell my wife. Normally, I wouldn't tell her this, but I'm like, sweetie, now this is critical. You must know. So that whole night, I'm lying on my bed, and there are days when I, there are periods, short periods when I would doze off, and I'll see myself calling, and I'll mention a name wherever you are. We call your spirit back into the body now, wherever you are. Sometimes I doze off, and I see that she has crossed a certain line, and I begin to shout, wherever you are, we call you back. We call your soul back. You cannot die. You have not finished your work. You shall not die, but live to declare the works of God. The whole 
night into Sunday last week, I didn't sleep. Calling, why? The purpose of the man of God is the healing of the flock. When the doctors have said it is finished, ah, the man of God has an ability to activate powers beyond human powers. That we may find grace and obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Now the doctor says that morning, six o'clock, he wakes up. As he wakes up, he just sees the call of the doctor that went to open up and his heart is just jumping. Because he knows that when he left the night before, his wife was, had been declared dead. We're just telling him that, just prepare for the news. The, the doctor says, I also didn't sleep, but I came to see your wife and your wife is awake this morning. <laughs> ah. <laughs> So Sunday we finished second service at 11. I just see the husband calling and I'm, my heart jumps a bit. I'm like, God, I hope this, the woman is not dead. Because he says, Doc, I need to tell you that your daughter is alive. And the doctor said, this is a miracle. And I know that this is just the doing of the Lord. Why? The work of the man of God is the healing of the flock. The healing of the flock. Don't tell me that it is not work. The healing of the flock. When the professor has said this is prepare yourself. The man of God says, God, we will stand in the gap and we will intercede. All is not lost because when God steps in, miracles begin to happen. When God steps in, signs and wonders begin to happen. When God steps in, the situation is turned around. Today I pray for you. I pray for 10 people. I pray for 20 people. May God step in for you. Wherever you are, may God intervene for you. Wherever you are, may God step in and turn the situation around for you. If God be for us, who can be against us? If God be for us, who can be against us? Ah, the man of God. So Jesus tells Peter, and I'll end with this scripture. Luke 22 verse 31. And the Lord said to Simon, he was the shepherd of the 12 apostles. He says, Simon, Simon, indeed Satan has asked for you that he may sift you as wheat. But what you didn't see, I, the man of God over you, I have prayed for you that your faith fail you not. I came to tell somebody what you didn't see. Our prophet has prayed for you that your faith will fail you not. What the enemy planned as evil, our prophet and mama have prayed for you that your faith fail you not. Listen to the new living translation. It says, Simon, Simon, Satan has asked to sift each of you like wheat. That means the man of God is responsible. Sometimes Satan comes to ask permission. And the man of God you are under is very important. Jesus said, Satan has asked to sift you as wheat, to make you an nonentity. But I have pleaded in prayer for you. Our prophet and our mama have pleaded in prayer for you. Therefore, no harm can come to you. Listen to the message Bible and I will end. This is Simon, stay on your toes. Satan has tried his best to separate all of you from me. Like chaff. But I have prayed for you in particular that you do not give in or give out. Satan has planned to separate you from me, but I have prayed for you in particular. I came to tell somebody you will not give in. You will not give out. If you watch a boxing match, for sometimes they are beating them, the, the, the boxer so hard that the, his, the people on the bench throw a white towel in to say, we give in. If you don't stop this match, referee, the, our, our champion is dead. Our archbishop and mama have prayed for you. You will not give in. When you are, when, when you are at the point of death, you will not give out. Why? They have prayed for you. They have prayed for you. 
So the devil goes around with his arrows by day and his terrors by night. And the pastor or the prophet is on his knees praying. And when the pastor is on his knees praying, he's praying that you will be covered. He's praying that there will be no incidents or accidents. He's praying that God will protect you. May no plan of the enemy work for you. On the altar of my father, the archbishop, may no plan of the enemy work for you. May no assignment of the enemy work against you. May you escape every plan of the enemy. As a bear has escaped out of the snare of the fowler. I declare and I decree to somebody this morning. As you walk through the valley of the shadow of death. May you never fear any evil. For God is with you. For his rod and his staff. They comfort you. When you go through the valley of the shadow of death. Know that your prophet and mama. They are in prayer with you. Know that they are standing with you. They are in prayer with you. And God will appear for you. His rod and his staff. They will comfort you. Even in the valley of the shadow of death. This week assignment of the enemy against you by the altar of my father we scatter it in the name of Jesus this week every arrow from the north from the south from the east from the west that will fly at you in the day in the night from your home from your office upon the anointing of the prophet of this house we scatter the arrows this morning we invoke the presence of God this morning we invoke the shade of the most high this morning we invoke the umbrella of God this morning we invoke the covering of the Lord the covering on this ministry the covering on this commission over your life over your family ah this week this month you are escaping every trap of the enemy you are escaping every pit of the enemy you are escaping every trap like a bird out of the snare of a fowler the hunter thinks he has won but God says it is not finished yet God says the prophet of the house is interceding though the devil you plan to sift God's people like wheat out of the chaff Lord the prophet of this house has prayed and we are covered and we have refuge and we are comforted ah you want to give Jesus praise you want to give Jesus praise I see God covering somebody. I see an arrow targeted at someone. If you watch movies or you see how military maneuvers were, when two planes are flying, a plane, the plane behind can be locked onto the plane in front and the missile, wherever the lead pilot is going, that missile is going to touch him. I can see somebody who has been targeted and it is, it is a done deal. This one, it is just waiting for it to hit. And I just see the covering of the law. Come and say, you are protected. Because the man of God has knelt down. And is interceding for the saints. May you be kept. May you be kept by the power of God. May you be kept this week. May your children be kept this week. May your grandchildren be kept this week. By the power of the Most High God. You want to give Jesus praise. When a man of God is praying, he is working. He's working. He's working. Want to bow down your heads? If you are here, you don't know Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior. This covering cannot work for you. you. Don't know Jesus as your Lord and personal. You are living in fear. You have broken the covering. You say, I want to give my life to Christ. I want to say, I. I want to make things right. You want to lift up your hand, your right hand, quickly, quickly. You are out of time. You want to lift up your right hand. You want to lift up your right hand. If your hand is lifted, you want to be on your feet. If you are watching us, you are listening by radio. 
You want to be on your feet. And if you are on your feet, you want to come forward. You want to come forward. And if you are watching or listening, you want to pray this prayer after me. You want to say, Dear Lord, forgive me all my sins. I believe that you died for me. And that you rose for me. And that you, you washed me of my sins. Come into my heart. Thank you, Lord, for hearing me. In Jesus' name, amen. You want to place your hand on your chest. If you are watching, listening, let me pray with you. Father, we thank you for your people. Establish them in your house. Make them a sign and a wonder. In Jesus' name, amen. You want to be on your feet this morning? You want to be on your feet this morning? And if you are sick in any part of your body, you want to place your hand where you are hurting? Father, we lift your sons and daughters into your, hand, into your hands. Father, the work of the man of God is the healing, the prayer for the healing of the flock. Father, our prophet and our mama have been praying and interceding for your people. Father, upon their anointing this morning, Father, we pray the healing of your sons and daughters. Father, every pain in the body may it vanish this morning. Father, whatever needs repair may it be repaired this morning. Father, whatever is dead, Father, may it come back to life. Father, whatever is deteriorating, Father, we pray life into it this morning. Heal your people from the crown of their heads to the soles of their feet. We thank you, Lord, for answer prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. If you are worshiping with us, if you are clapping, please, you can do that. If you are worshiping with us for the first time, you want to lift your hand and wave to us. You are worshiping with us wherever you are. You are worshiping with us for the first time. You want to lift your hand and wave to us. Thank you, thank you. If you waved, please, you want to walk to me in front here. You want to walk to me in front here. You are worshiping with us for the first time. You want to walk to me in front here. Yeah, we have a warm reception for you. You get this once. It's a, this reception is once and it is for first timers only. We have a warm reception. We have a team that will meet you. We have a brochure for you with information about the ministry. Which point that's for the first time you want to come out wherever you are. When you come a second time, you don't benefit from the reception. You don't benefit from this warm so this. Worship with us for the first time. There's a lady to my right hand side. You are welcome to Perez Chapel International. This is the Perez Dome, the seat of the Archbishop. He's kindly winning souls in Lebanon. But if you come again, you see him. All right, so there's a lady to my right hand side. Please follow her and the team will talk to you. Church, let's clap for them. Let's clap for them. You want to take your second offering? You want to take your second offering? This morning. And you want to take a quality seed. You want to take a quality seed. Quality, quality seed. Under this atmosphere and anointing. And you want to give 200 Ghana cities. And more. You want to come quickly and drop your offering on this altar. This exalted altar of our father, the Archbishop. What a privilege it is to come to the altar every Sunday with our offering. To make contact with the altar. Ay, ay, ay. Jacob woke up one morning and angels had come and had ministered to him. He said, I didn't know God was in this place. The Bible says that he built an altar that will speak against every deception of the enemy. He went to Laban's house and came back and he came and the Bible says he gave a tithe on that altar. There is an altar in this house that speaks greater and louder. You want to give 100 Ghana cities? You want to come forward. You want to give 100 Ghana cities? You want to come forward? You want to give 100 Ghana cities? You want to come and drop it? 100 Ghana cities? hundred Ghana cities they gave according to their ability if you if it's within your ability come and give sometimes you may be sacrifice it but as you are sacrificing God is releasing and blessing you you want to give 50 Ghana cities you want to come and give you want to give 50 Ghana cities you want to come out and give sorry for taking your time this morning
15. Want to give 20 Ghana cities? You want to come out and give 20, 10, 5, 2, 1. You want to come out and give. Ah, this altar speaks greater things, it speaks louder, it drowns every other voice, it swallows every other altar. The rod of Moses swallowed every other snake. Why the altar of the Most High God swallows every other altar? If you are watching or listening to us, you want to dial star 800, star 1000 hash across all mobile money platforms, star 800, star 1000 hash. You can also give our MTN mobile money to 0243 500 624, 0243 500 624. You can give our Vodafone cash and the number is 020 316 2084, 020 316 2084. You can give our Sendwave or World Remit if you are watching from outside Ghana. And the name is Perez Chapel International. And the number is plus 233 20 316 2084. Plus 233 20 316 2084. You can also give our PayPal. The account name is Perez Dome. The username is at Perez Dome. And the email is Perez Dome at Perez Perestome at perestchapel.org. Can we pray over the offerings? Father, we thank you for the offerings you have given. Father, this altar of our father and prophet, the archbishop, is an exalted altar. Father, an altar that speaks louder. Father, an altar that is mightier. Father, an altar that swallows every other altar. Father, may this altar speak for your people. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Can we have our electronic announcements? Can we have our electronic announcements? Good morning, family. My name is Genevieve A. Odum. We are glad you chose to spend part of your weekend with us. On behalf of our senior ministers, Archbishop Charles Ajinasari, founder of Perez Chapel International and prelate of the Perez Dome, and our mother and co-founder, Reverend Vivian Ajinasari, we welcome you to the Perez Dome. Our vision is to be a global family church that glorifies God and enriches our world with the compassion of Christ and the power of the Holy Ghost. Kindly take note of the following announcements. Rhema time and communion service. Precious one. I'm Archbishop Charles Ajinasari. Before I turned 60, I started praying for our Tuesday meetings. God put on my heart to share some deep things with you and to be ministering to you. On Tuesday, it's our communion service. Don't forget, when they ate the Passover in the book of Exodus, they went by the strength of that. There was not one feeble person amongst them for 40 years. This coming Tuesday is a special Tuesday. I want to specially invite you to be in attendance because I'll be sharing some things and breaking bread with you or sharing communion with you. And the power of God will be activated in your life like never before. Invite your friends and your family and be with me at the Rima service coming Tuesday from 6 p.m. and your life will never be the same. God will meet you at the point of your need. See you there. This Tuesday, we will have our administrative bishop, Bishop Raymond Aqua, minister to us. Don't forget, it's our communion service. See you soon. Precious one, I want to specially invite you to our service this and every Sunday at the Perez Dome, Jowlu Junction. The Bible says God sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their distractions. I have a special word from God for you that will bring you healing, deliverance, and turn your life around completely. If you are sick, troubled, struggling in your finances, your job or your family, the power of God's word will set you free. 
So join me at the Perez Dome this and every Sunday. When you are light at the Jolu Junction, just ask for the Perez Dome or look out for this big church building. We have pastors and trained people who will help you. Our first service is at 6.30 a.m. and the second service is at 9 a.m. Get ready for your freedom. I'll be expecting you this Sunday. God bless you. Please, there'll be free buses available to shuttle you from Jolu to Seiko, Jolu to La Paz and to Malam Junction, Jolu to Achimota and to Mal 7, Jolu to 37 to Medina. Until next time, my name is Genevieve A. Odum, Electronic Media Department. Don't forget to follow, like, and interact with us on Facebook and Instagram with the name at the Perez Dome. Have an awesome week. See you on Tuesday for our Rima time and communion service. Bye. Beloved, I hope you've been blessed by the service. If you don't know Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior, pray this prayer with me. Dear God, forgive me all my sins. Lord Jesus, come into my life. Make my life a testimony to those who know me. Thank you, Lord, for answered prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Put your hand on your chest, let us pray. Heavenly Father, I pray that this dear viewer will know you. I pray that you open the eyes of their understanding, make them a testimony to your praise and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. And if you are sick in any part of your body, lay your hand where you are hurting, let us pray. Heavenly Father, stretch forth your healing hand, touch your son or daughter, and I ask that from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet, you be made every way to all us. I bind every spirit of sickness and disease, every spirit of weakness and pain, every spirit of cancer. I cast you to die at the roots. And I ask that from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet, you be made every way to all in Jesus' name. Whatever you couldn't do before, begin to do it right now. You will experience the power of God in your body, you'll see that you are never the same. Send me a testimony. Let me know what the Lord has done for you. And if you are believing God for any breakthrough whatsoever, put your hand on your forehead. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I ask that you stretch forth your miracle-working power and hand and touch this dear viewer. And I pray that you turn their story around. You give them victory, breakthroughs, favor, open doors, opportunities, stable marriages, in Jesus' name, we call it done. Amen. Join us same time next week, God willing, and your life will never be the same. Jesus loves you. I do with the love of God.